Did you know that 90% of the top leaders possess one critical skill that sets them apart from the rest, but yet and still many leaders struggle with building trust, inspiring their teams, and making critical decisions? Well, on today's episode, I'm going to share the ultimate tip that will transform your leadership and take you to the next level. So stick around to the end because this is going to unlock so much for you. Grab your pen, your piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're going to start right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience going all the way from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational and your leadership journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget, hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our newest episode or content. All right, everybody, welcome in and welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about leadership. And we're talking about like, what is the thing that leaders need to do in order to unlock that unlimited potential within every one of the organizations that we lead? So when we think about building trust with our team, building and inspiring teams that are going to perform at a high level, they're going to get those results. They're going to, they're going to productively struggle through those challenges that they'll inevitably face. And then also when we're sitting back and there is a critical gut-wrenching decision that must be made and you as a leader have to make it, what are the things that you're going to rely on? What are the things that you're going to sit back and say, I know what to do and I know how to go about this next phase because I've built this leadership capacity within myself. And so what is that one thing? What's that one thing that 90% of leaders all possess? It's high levels of emotional intelligence. And today we're going to talk about three strategies of how you amplify your emotional intelligence so you can be a better leader and you can do your job at the highest level possible. So without further ado, let's jump into strategy number one related to emotional intelligence. All right, strategy number one, as we're building high levels of emotional intelligence, it's all about self-awareness. Now, self-awareness is one of the number one ways that you can build trust within your team. Because self-awareness looks like somebody who understands their strengths, understands their areas of weakness or growth, is somebody who can be vulnerable, is somebody who can be assertive because you're self-aware and you know where you're strong and also where you need growth. You know where you need some assistance and a highly self-aware individual can be vulnerable can be more open and more ready to accept feedback, more willing and ready to accept risk, more willing and ready to talk to their folks in a different way where they don't always portray that they have all of the answers all of the time. A self-aware leader is a leader that people will follow because they feel that they can trust them because they see them as a real person. So when you're struggling, and when you're trying to think about what do I need to do better and different, step back for a moment and think about being self-reflective. This raises your level of emotional intelligence. The ability to take stock, analyze, reflect, be critical of yourself, and then think about what are the next two to three steps, the next two to three things that I need to do better and different so I can be there for my team, with my team, and lead my team. High levels of self-awareness builds trust and develops organizational strength and capacity. And that's your strategy number one. So as we move into the second thing that we need to build and develop around emotional intelligence so we can unlock that, that ultimate leadership skill, we're talking about how do we practice empathy? Empathy. How can we be an empathetic leader? How can we be somebody who understands that it is important to be able to know, feel, and connect with the challenges that other people are feeling. When we can step back and put ourselves in somebody else's shoes, it may not be our experience. It may not be what we've gone through. We may not have seen the same challenges. We may not have faced the same issues. But as a leader, can we demonstrate empathy, a type of care, a type of understanding and a type of connection and feeling and putting ourselves in the shoes of another person who may be going through a challenge. That humility, that humble moment that you, you, you 
you kind of peel back all the hard layers, the, the armor that we wear as leaders far, far too often. When we take that off and we sit knee to knee with somebody, we look them in the eye and we do our best to feel what they're feeling in that moment. And we try to connect with them and reassure them that we are there to support them, help them. And in some cases as leaders protect them, make sure that they are okay. But we have to be able to feel and see ourselves in their shoes. This is the number one way to inspire your team. This is the number one way to make them start to believe that they wanna go through fire for you, that they will knock down any hurdle, they will run through any brick wall to help you achieve what you're trying to achieve as a leader because they've been inspired. But more than being inspired, they feel connected. They feel like they have a relationship and you demonstrate that through compassion and through empathy. And so when we as leaders are able to demonstrate that, it is the number one way to build highly motivated teams, highly engaged teams, and teams that are willing to go the extra mile for the leader when they know the leader is going to go the extra mile for them. So when we're talking about emotional intelligence and we're going at that highest level, strategy number two is all about empathy. Let's talk about strategy number three, effective communication. Sometimes one of the most challenging things that we have to do is effectively communicate. And I smile because every single day we look at communication and we look at just how challenging it can be. We think we've communicated. We think that people know what we're thinking. We think that people know where we want to go. We think we're communicating. And then we are we're, <laughs> we're sometimes very, very, very um and I lost my train of thought, but we get reminded that we don't communicate very well. All right. And in a previous role, previous world of doing YouTube, I'd probably edit all this out, but this is just real. Communication is, is challenging. And so I struggle when I kind of think about it because as a leader, it's hard to communicate. It's hard to communicate in this medium right now. It's hard to communicate on paper. It's hard to communicate in person, but we have to find ways to be effective communicators. And I think most notably along the lines of emotional intelligence, it's remembering that effective communication really is about a two-way dialogue. One of the most effective communication strategies that we can use now as high-level leaders is to actually step back, take the nonverbal cues, listen longer, talk less and just hear the feedback that is coming. When we're able to hear the feedback and we're able to listen longer and take those nonverbal cues and affirm what people are sharing and then take that information, reflect on it, and then put together a coherent, clear message back communicating to them, back communicating to a group, then we are building a relationship and we're building trust and we're building organizational capacity. And so when I think about effective communication, it is a two way dialogue. It's a two way street. And so I'm going to give you a bonus tip that's going to help really implement. It's like a concrete strategy. You can start using effective tomorrow if you want to build your communication strategies and if you want to be a much more effective communicator. And so before we move to that, though, share with us in the comments below. Share some strategy about how you're going to implement how are you going to demonstrate empathy to your team? How are you going to be an effective communicator? And we're going to give you that strategy in just a moment. But also, how are you going to demonstrate that self-awareness? How are you going to be reflective? Share that with us in the comments below. Because again, we want to build these toolkits, these toolboxes of skills and strategies, mindsets, capacities, protocols. And the more you put in the comments, the more the community can leverage and use those strategies in their practice as well. We want to share this broadly for everybody to be able to benefit from. So share with us in the comments below how you'll implement some of these emotionally intelligent strategies for your own leadership practices. And now let's talk about that concrete strategy. As a concrete strategy, we want to always practice active listening. And when I said, I said practice, because it's critically important that we're doing it all the time. So what does active listening look like as a leader? 
Number one, it means being fully present, fully present in the moment of whoever on your team is sharing something with you. You're listening, you're locked in, you're leaned in, you're paraphrasing, you're repeating back, you're asking clarifying questions, but being an active listener demonstrates a high level of respect because it shows that you care what's being shared, but also that you're hearing it, you're processing it, and going through those intentional steps of practicing active listening demonstrates to the person you're talking to that you're gonna take action. You're gonna do something meaningful with the information that they shared. And so as we think about these high levels of emotional intelligence, if there's something that you could do that doesn't cost you a whole lot, other than a little, little bit of time and a little bit of effort and a little bit of energy, it's to be a more effective communicator by practicing active listening. And you could do that tomorrow. You could do things like making sure to practice active listening, the small little act of flipping your phone over, moving it out of arm's length reach, obviously putting it on silent, even opening up a drawer, putting it inside of a drawer, but being completely detached from the phone demonstrates that you are present. And then as you are listening, taking in and processing, asking reflective questions, nodding, giving affirmations, asking those clarifying questions are gonna be signals, cues to the person you're talking to that what you're saying, what they're saying really does matter. But those are strategies you can use literally tomorrow. And I would encourage you to do that because we want to take your leadership to the next level. You know, and again, you know, if you've been with us this long through the episode, thank you so much for, for hanging in there with us. And if you're getting value, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this with a friend, share it with 10 friends, uh, because we want to continue to grow the skills, the knowledge and capacity of leaders across education and across business and industry. We want to be helpful. We want to add that value. And so as we think about how we actually move forward, emotional intelligence and building that capacity in you as a leader is critically important for your success. And so if you want more information about emotional intelligence and increasing it for your leadership, you can check out this next video right here. It's gonna give you some great insights and it's gonna extend on your knowledge and your capacity around emotional intelligence. If you want more information about resources, coaching, our weekly newsletter, you can check the description below because we want to continue to add that value. So until we see you on our next episode, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and be well, everyone. Thanks.